Hello, and welcome to Beyond the Point podcast with me, Allie Christensen. I'm curating the content I wish I had had as a dancer and creating strong, healthy, thriving dancers for the future. Not only am I your host and ex-professional dancer, but I own Align Fitness, a cross-training studio for dancers here in Costa Mesa, California, and am the creator of online courses for dancers such as the Dancer Strong Program, Lower Body Flexibility, and Turnout for Dancers. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to have Austin here. He's pumping his fist, mostly because we've been trying to get this to work and and we're finally (laughs) together. I'm so excited that our schedules worked. Uh, Austin, I've been trying to get to talk to you for several months now, so I'm so happy to have you. Welcome. (laughs) Thank you. I I feel welcomed. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, I'm... I have been all day been thinking, oh my gosh, I get to nerd out about ballet, one of my favorite things. And if we, we get to talk to it, talk about it from the other side of things where we're as teachers talking about how we perfect ourselves and our relationship with our students and our bodies, this gets me jazzed and I get really excited about it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited to I pick know. your brain. No, I'm, I honestly, like, I love talking ballet, but I, I think I, t- I love talking more about it with people who, like, love to see it change and go for, like, the next generation. So that's pretty, that's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this. Yeah. And that's what you're all about, or at least I have to admit, we've never met in person. So that's what I feel like you're all about. <laughs> And what I see on Instagram and all the content that you put out and a couple people who I've actually met in common with you recently have said, oh my gosh, Austin's amazing. And I said, I'm trying to get him on my podcast. <laughs> it was That's fantastic. So yeah, I was wow. just with Kirsten. Uh, we were in Miami together with an adult workshop and she said that oh, she was yeah. doing stuff with you. So I was so excited to hear what you guys were up to and what you're, what you're creating, which we'll get into and all that stuff. So dance world is small and I've heard wonderful things about you. Um, Can you share with everyone a little bit of your background? What kind of led you here? What do you feel like is important for people to know about you as a dancer or non-dancer? Yeah. um, Honestly, well, first of all, I'm blown away. Um, Just, it's just, it's funny for me because like, I always like think, well, you know, I'm just doing this because I I do what I do because I saw a need and I want to fill that need. And I want to make sure that the ballet industry and the dance industry is a better industry tomorrow than it was yesterday, Mm -hmm. Uh, especially when I was training and dancing professionally. You know, there's things that I I witnessed and was like, hmm, this could be better. And um, so, yeah. So for me, um, hearing that is like, it's just, it's really cool. It's really nice to hear all that. But as for me, um, I actually started, so I, I started pretty darn late in the, in the scene. I started at 15 years old. And I didn't actually take it. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I didn't actually become serious until I was 17. And so it was just like I was doing all the dance classes. And I originally did it because my mom kind of talked me into it by uh, saying, of like, this could help you with um, cross training for baseball, which is what I did my entire mm-hmm. life. Um, but as soon as I did dance, I was like, oh, this is, this is actually kind of cool. I like this. I uh, didn't want to admit it at the time, but I, I definitely did enjoy it. Uh, you know, the stigma on men and stuff like that, which mm-hmm. we can definitely talk about. But, um, yeah, there was, there was that, but I remember just being like, oh man, this is, this is enjoyable. I, I like this a lot. I want to do more of this. And I did do more of it. And it was, there was this kind of a moment where, uh, when I was 17, my junior year of high school, where I was like, wait, I, I think I want to do this. Like, this is something I want to pursue. And uh, everyone called me nuts. Everyone looked at me and was like, dude, you're never going to make it because you're an old person <laughs> well, older for ballet. And um, it's just you have so much going against you. And I was just like, um, OK. I'm like, I was just like, no, this is something I'm passionate about. This is something I want to do. So I'm going to do it. And um, so I ended up doing it. I went to the University of Oklahoma and um, ended up getting my degree, Bachelor's of Fine Arts in Ballet Pedagogy, which is kind of a story in itself. Um, but it's uh, I transitioned from ballet performance to pedagogy, and, which is teaching, for those who don't know mm-hmm. what pedagogy is. And because uh, I was like, you know what, I actually really want to learn how to teach because I enjoy um, providing that for people. And it was kind of an awakening for me. So... 
ever since uh, at that point, it was just like I had a lot to catch up on. Um, I was still kind of like the bottom of my class. Um, I had a lot of technique to catch up on, and there was there was I there was a, a need for something, and I, I knew I wasn't going to get it if I didn't think efficiently. So. I knew that with baseball, we always incorporated exercise science. We always did, you know, exercises to help us get better in baseball. And then I looked at dance and I'm like, wait, why aren't we doing the same thing in dance? Why why can't we do the same thing? Why do we have to just do technique classes and then pretend like you're going to get better when there's a much more efficient way to go about it, which is, yeah, you still take your technique classes, but you're going to complement it. You're going to supplement it. You're going to put it side by side with this training for your body because that's what you yeah I won't get into it just now but like it just made sense to me so when mm-hmm. I was in college I just started doing that for myself and quickly I started when I was a freshman when in a non-major ballet class where the rest of my peers in my class were just doing you know in the second or third level I was in <laughs> I was with like musical theater majors and uh, acting majors some football players and like I was there and there was a very humbling moment of like okay time to rise above let's go let's get this done and then um incorporated all that and by the my senior year i was in the top level and i was i was with the rest of my classmates finally um so it was kind of like that moment so yeah so after that um i ended up getting a job as a professional ballet dancer and um through that entire time it was just this recognizing that there are things that need to be changed um i like to use the word adapt because people are mm-hmm. commonly like afraid of the word change. And so adaptation is a lot easier to comprehend and to kind of take on. So adapt. There's the things that we can adapt in our industry. There's things that we can adapt in our instruction. And there's things that we can adapt to help make the, um, the learning process and the, the training process of ballet that much more efficient and also smarter for our bodies so that we're not getting injured as much and we're not... Um, dealing with a lot of maybe the potential psychological issues that go along with the training, um, traditional training. And there's just, it's just so much. I mean, you and I, we're going to have a blast talking because <laughs> I'm already going on all these rants because it's, it's just so excited, but you know, I know. that's, that's kind of my, my background. <laughs> okay. Well, I have, a, I have so many, so many questions and thoughts, but I do want to ask you um, when you started training at 15 and decided at 17, you were going to do this professionally, or you wanted to try to go as far as you could. Um, what kind of studio were you in? I think so many people oh. are in a small studio uh, that maybe doesn't, quote, produce professional dancers. Um, and they're wondering how they how they can make that next step. Were you in yeah. a smaller studio? Or were you in a, you know, like more of an academy that was sending dancers off to college or into their career? Uh, I think this is what might give people hope is because I went to a family-owned studio, Mm -hmm. a very small studio, and they didn't expect anybody to go professional. In fact, I think out of their 25-plus years of teaching, only three people went professional. One was at Cirque du Soleil, one was in Vegas doing shows, and then there was me who Mm -hmm. went off and became a professional ballet dancer. So... Just because you aren't in an academy doesn't mean that you're not going to make it, y'all. Like, that, nothing is impossible. Like, just get that straightforward. Nothing's impossible. So it's probably going to be hard, very difficult, but it, nothing's impossible. So, yeah, I started at a very small studio. I knew the owner. Uh, we were family friends. In fact, uh, to, to put things to maybe talk about one um, topic that needs to be addressed is the socioeconomic uh, aspect of taking ballet classes. It's Mm -hmm. only those who can afford it can receive that quote unquote top tier instruction. But Mm -hmm. I didn't get that quote unquote top tier instruction. Instead, I got the heart instruction. I got the instructors who truly cared for the human being and they instilled that sense in me along with the joy of dancing instead of, you know, not to say that those top tier academies don't do that, but it was, I, I feel like I had a better foundation because they treated me as a human being first rather than someone's a subject or an object that um, is going to be playing in this field. So it was, yeah, it, I think that hopefully that kind of gives y'all hope because, and that's why I do what I do. It's because like, you don't need to be in uh, this company or this school or this academy. All you need is you and the education that you can receive and should receive. Mm-hmm. 
I have a similar story. Oh, breath. <laughs> it gets kind of emotional sometimes when you get passionate really about those things that you, you felt it like felt as a kid. Um, yeah. I have a similar story, very small family owned studio that was not sending people off into any type of career, but my gosh, did those teachers make an impact on me. And as you said, like taught me how to be a human in dance and to love art. Mm -hmm. And, um, there was an episode I actually did with a, who's now a, a very big choreographer, but she was just a teacher fresh out of college that was in our school. And I realized as I talked to her more here on the podcast, she was talking about what's important to her as her, some of her strengths are really creating for the dancers or the people that she's working with and trying not to have an agenda, but what, what can I make look really good on these people? I realized that that's something that she instilled in me years and years ago without thinking, without me thinking about it. That was very much something that was, how can I assist this individual? What do we do to create and build up this group where they're at, as opposed to, I want you to be here. You're not here yet. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how do we get you there right now to meet my, as the teacher demands, as opposed to yeah. let's build you all together and individually from where you're at and take you to the next step. So um, there's definitely something to say about quote, the smaller studios, uh, but I know I had to search out, um, different training as I got older. And at 17, I had to decide, am I going to try to go into college or something else? And I had to make an additional step myself. Like you said, it wasn't easy, yeah. but it was possible. And that kind of, that's exactly what happened through all of my training from being trainees to dancing, to learn, starting off into this career that I have now, I had to be very resourceful and figure out how to receive education for very little money that I had. I cleaned apartments mm -hmm. for of for like teachers and trainers in trade for privates. That's that's how I got some of my education was by just being resourceful and creative because that economic difference does does create a difference in our in our training here. Yeah, it really does. It's neat that <clears throat> our backgrounds are similar in that way. Um, it doesn't surprise me that you have that mindset as you teach either. Because uh, mm -hmm. when I first found you on Instagram, I was like, oh, I love this. This is exactly what I'm going for. I'm going to get connected because this mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it is it is a very interesting thing to think about. Um, and you do really have to be kind of resourceful with, with what you do and how you do it. Um, as for me, a lot of my dance science knowledge, I don't even have a degree in it. I don't have a certificate. I just had it because it was something I was passionate about. Um, I've only taken science courses, but I, like, I quite literally don't have anything to back me up like a CSCS or anything of a sort. Mm -hmm. Um, it'd be nice to, but you know, as, as far as that goes, it was just me saying, Hmm, I have an interest in this. And so I'm going to just pursue it and, and I'm going to get it no matter, no matter what. And, yeah. and so the knowledge is just within me. So yeah, yeah you do have to be pretty, pretty resourceful. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding. I am a strong believer that <laughs> in any area, a degree means nothing. It, yeah. it, it's ha the information and how you use it. Um, I also don't have a degree in any type of dance science or, I, you know, sports education. Um, everything that I've done has been through uh, searching out knowledge and acquiring little certifications and whatever. But, um, you know, that's, that's been on my own volition. And when people ask me, what did you do? Where did, you know, what did you do to get here? It's like, okay, we got it like full circle here because everything I've done has brought me to this spot. There wasn't, you know, I didn't go to school yeah. here and got all my education in one spot that taught me exactly what I, what I do now. And I, I really feel that the best instructors of everything, the best mentors are the people that can take the information in, understand it themselves, and then put it out in an even better way than they learned it to continue yeah. that, uh, evolution of information as you said things are always totally. evolving and adapting as you were a little bit older when you started and then went into college knowing that you wanted to learn how to teach dance do you feel like that made a difference in how you teach right off the bat well, let me say one other thing here when i i grew up dancing young and had all the, the same cues all the things that we all know how um all the stigmas that were there were there very heavily. 
after when I was uh, 21, 20, 21, when I injured myself, when I went back into class, it was like I had never danced before. I had the mm. memory of what it felt like to have my leg up close to my ear, but I couldn't do it. And I couldn't get my body to even get close to what I had felt before. And it was a humbling and belittling experience all at one time. Yeah. But that, again, is one of those things that completely shifted and altered my knowledge and education because I had to relearn how to do things without the generic dance corrections that we hear because my favorite one is pull up. Um, and it's, <laughs> it was like, Oh crap. What does pull up mean as an adult? Like it, you, yeah. as a kid, you just learn pull up, pull up, pull up. And you, you have a thing you do, you suck your belly in. But when I actually thought, what is this helping me do? Because I'm literally in pain and can't get my leg off the ground. What is pull up actually doing for me? And I had to completely change, reevaluate, and learn what these cues were. And when I did that, I was like, this is different than what I understood as a child. So do yeah. you think you had any of that benefit of coming into it later? Did you have any of that where you learned something and maybe it evolved into something else? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, no, that's actually a really great question. I haven't heard that one before. Um, yeah, I honestly, I really do think that being an older student in ballet has an advantage. And now that I think about it, uh, some some people on Instagram will reach out and they're late starters as well, even mm -hmm. later than I was. And they'll say that they've made immense progress since the first day that they've they've signed up and then till now. And it's just because they have this kind of meta metacognitive response to what they're doing. It was like, well, they're asking me to do this. I'm feeling it, but something's not up. And so they're kind of just reviewing that process in their mind. And, but so that's like the, I think the, the benefit of going in as a, well, sort of mature person is that you can really view what is being asked of you in a complex manner. And so I think if you're a youngster uh, or someone who is young and uh, maybe still training, that you can actually take a look at this and you, you can look at the instruction and say, what are they asking of me? What are they trying to, to get out of me instead of just this immediate action of pull up? Why are they telling me to pull up? And so that's like, that's how I think us being a late starter, that's how I looked at it and was like, well, you know, they are asking me to do this. And, you know, at the beginning, I just kind of do what I was told. But then as the years progressed, I was like, yeah, but let's, let's figure out, okay, why is it? So I think you could actually make a good habit out of doing that. It was just asking why it for yourself. And if you don't know the answer, then in a good time, <laughs> in an appropriate time in the class, yeah. you can ask the teacher and be like, hey, why, why did you ask me to pull up in that moment? Can you just like briefly in 30 seconds, just like help me understand this. Uh, thank you for your time. Like that's an amazing thing for y'all to do because, and I, the teachers would love it because we love when teacher, where, when students come up to us in that way, because it tells us that you're interested. It tells us that you want more. And so it's like, it's like a good chef. A chef is not going to turn away uh, seconds, right? They're going to be like, yeah, okay. And they're going to make you another plate. So it's the same thing as us teachers. We're just going to be like, yeah, okay. You, you want another dish? I'll give it to you. Um, but to answer your question a little bit more, it's like, I went to to college and I like that that switch in that degree it was it was really it was just that kind of this idea in my in my mind of I think I'll get a better education out of this if I think of it or if I change my perspective of dance instead of like performance because I knew how to perform I actually did musical theater all my life as well mm -hmm. um, and acting with my brother and so I knew how to perform but I didn't. I wanted to learn the the exterior of the technique. I wanted to really hone in on it. And I think that actually helped me get my technique faster too, is because I actually was able to look at it from a teacher's perspective, um, which is funny because I have I have a workshop that I do and it's um, practicing as a pedagogue. <laughs> and oh, it I basically that. means that, I know, right? It's a real, I like the alliteration. Um, but you, you basically practice as if you are the teacher. And so every single step that you go through, you're just asking yourself the exact question I told you to ask is, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. What will this, how will this affect me later in class? What is the primary goal of this class in order for me to, to you know, this step is going to get to that point? Actually, it was the week that we're recording here. I'm teaching in a workshop for adults. And 
I we're doing an alignment workshop and somebody asked, how do I engage my core? And I was like, oh my gosh, do I answer this question the way I want to answer this question? Or you know, like all the things are going through my head. Yeah. I'm like, how am I going to answer this? It's a group of 50 dancers. I already said to them, you know, I love working with groups, but if I can choosing exercises and corrections that fit as many people as possible, this means that, you know, we can't mm-hmm. dive into the individual in this setting. But my answer was, and I hope that it sounded okay because I meant it okay, but I was like, do you know what engage your core means? Because I don't know what engage your core <laughs> means. Like, I don't know yeah. what to tell you when you ask me, how do I engage my core? I can tell you yeah. what muscles are, you know, working in the body, but I can't tell you what percent. I can't poke you and say, turn on this rib muscle and move right here. Right. And like when you do that, that's why you don't feel your your core engaged. That's why you don't feel like yeah. your torso is working. But what you can do is continue to ask questions and try exercises and make an experience in your body. And when the result matches what an effort that you're giving, I would say that's an engaged core. When your balance gets better, when your pirouettes get better, when your extensions and the list goes on, whatever you did was working in some way. So start from there. So we have to have these experiences, not just, uh, you know, like an outside pull up, engage your core. Uh, but it was a question that if someone had come to me on their own, I would have been like, oh my gosh, that's such a great question. Uh, and I I'm glad that we could answer it. But that's one of my favorite things that I hear is like, how do I, and then it's very blank or very uh, broad. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, yeah. okay, like, let's stick with why you are asking this about your body. What did you experience in your body that's making you ask good or bad what's going on? And that's always my coaching to dancers when they're going to ask their teachers is like, if they're getting a correction, like don't lift from the top of your leg or don't use your hip flexor, uh, then nicely asking the teacher, Hey, I want to know more about what's happening in my hip. What is working and what you, could you help me figure out what this feels like, you know, instead of just a, a blanket, like, yes, okay. I cannot use this muscle or just agreeing. If you don't know what it feels like in your body, ask the question. And I like how you said, give me a short answer because we all know we can ask a million (laughs) questions and that can go on. But I really liked the way you asked that. And I think I'm going to have to write that out in a script with a little quote for you and be like, here, ask your teachers this question. Austin said so. Yeah, please do so. Uh, but honestly, that was a, that's something that I, I, I laughed immediately because those questions are so, like, to me, they're just so funny because we're teaching a group and you can't just, it, one instruction is not going to be good for everybody and mm-hmm. that's my biggest thing with ba- traditional ballet instruction is that we get so caught up in that the students just need to sit back you need to be quiet you need to give your attention to the teacher you need to um, absorb as much as you can because the teacher is this wise creature that is going to give you everything that they know because it's been handed down to them but like i hate to, to inform you but your teacher doesn't know everything mm-hmm. your teacher in fact, your teacher is only going to give what they think is best or what maybe worked for them unless they go into their own training and think, well, yeah, this did work for me, but maybe it didn't work for person A that was dancing right next to me. Why didn't they get it? And then they can go down that avenue. So it's absolutely true. And I think the way that you described it to your your participant in the workshop was actually quite brilliant because... It is all about experience. It's an experiential format that you get to understand this technique, and um, which is a big fight. And that's how I do my ballet classes is, hey, we're going to do this combination. We're going to learn this concept. And then you're going to do it. And then we're going to take a break and we're going to talk about it. Because that's how you learn. That's how you are going to actually comprehend this con- or these, these concepts found in ballet technique. Um, you're not going to, yeah, you're going to learn it over time, but you can do it much more efficiently if we use higher order thinking skills Mm -hmm. within the process, because the first time that you go about that is, and you use this kind of this thinking skill, you are able to then, okay, let's do this again tomorrow, guys. Except except when you arrive tomorrow, you're going to think about this first and then we go into it. And then at that point, we're already one more step up the ladder. We're, We're already thinking higher than we did yesterday. 
Um, so yeah, it's 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 awesome. I I enjoy I enjoy questions like that because it's as teachers. I don't think y'all understand unless you're a teacher. I don't think y'all understand how terribly complex it is to be a teacher and try to give instruction that matches everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. It's it's really hard. It's really difficult to be able to supply something that is going to be not um, what's the word to supply something that's not going to be detrimental to one crowd and then but beneficial to another you want to be able to to find something that will fit everybody not to say that your teaching is very just vague but you can have multiple opportunities to express the same thing multiple yes. pathways that will express the same concept so yes absolutely yeah, and i love i love the idea i also teach dance classes this way where like this is the this is the concept we're thinking about for this combination and most of the time the combos are super simple and because i don't teach right week week to week i'm not teaching the same people like they're coming in for a workshop but i i love that way of taking class and looking back when i've had teachers that in the beginning of the combination made it clear what we're focusing on today this combination and it's all about getting your best fit it was like okay i understand what you want from me and there could have been more guidance, but I understand what you want from me. And that was very <laughs> helpful. Uh, and as we know, there's a million things to be thinking about in our body and ballet. And the list is just like, a. I always think of it like Star Wars in the beginning when it's like a million <laughs> things yeah. to be thinking about. And I'm like, oh my gosh, when is yeah. it over? <laughs> and then you do it again it's and ongoing. again and again. So uh, I love me. that idea. It, honestly... It feels more like less like Star Wars, but more like um, <laughs> the more like in uh, what is it called? Oh, how am I blinking on this? Mel Brooks. Oh, but it, there's like this opening scene where it's the funniest thing because it's the Star Destroyer, and yeah. it's just like five, like it feels like five minutes of just going across the Star Destroyer. But it's the same thing. It's like all these things keep coming up. Yeah. All right. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Just a moment there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well. As you're sharing a little bit more about what you do in your classes, and that's just teasing that out of you, um, what do you feel, what is your main goal in, in the way you teach? What is the, what are one or two of the things that you're trying to change in the, a class structure or the stigmas of class or the atmosphere of class? I know that there's probably a lot of things. I think every teacher has things that they want to accomplish in a class for sure. Um, so I know that this answer could be very broad, but are there certain things that you go in knowing I'm really working to long-term change this in my classes, mm. studio, dance world, you know, moving bigger and bigger? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's a lot. Um, the, the primary things that I tend to tackle um, within my classes, the, the, the actions that I do and the way that I lead my class and how I ask my students to do it ends up tackling a lot more than they realize. Because my, the biggest things that I've witnessed in the industry is that um, we have a sense of community, but it's very shallow. It, this, this community that we have, it's, it's awesome, but it can really quickly turn mm -hmm. and it can go sour fast. And it's because we all want the same thing. We all want that dream, the, the role, the job, whatever it might be. And the way that it's structured kind of systemically, it's, it, we, we constantly are practicing, this is for me. This is for my education. This is for my technique. And so what I try to do in my training is through the uh, modern modern educational research and practices is I try to base uh, dance education in community. So we're not just simply doing dance for ourselves, but we're learning the concepts, we're doing things. And just like I said earlier, we take a break and then we double back and we talk with one another. We work with one another because everyone's going to have strengths. Uh, everyone's going to have areas that they can improve upon and we can learn uh, through each other, not just from the teacher. But the teacher's job is to facilitate that sort of environment. And then by facilitating that environment, you're also creating a new community, a new atmosphere, and a new environment for the industry that is to come. Because you have these kids, these students practicing as a community versus just individualistically. So I, in my classes, I really 
try to promote community and relying upon one another rather than um, this false sense of community where, yeah, we're here, we're all doing this together, but in the end, in the end I'm going to do what's best for me. Then that's not a company. That's not, that's not a, a, a corps de ballet. That's not a, a, a troop. You want to feel like the person next to you, the person that's sitting or standing next to you at bar is going to be by your side and is going to back you up. And if they don't get that role, they're not going to turn against you and, and say, like, well, why didn't I get that and be upset at the, at the fact. But instead, they're going to be like, you know what? They deserve that role. They, they absolutely flawlessly went through that audition and, and they got recognized that by that choreographer, whatever it was. And, you know, I'm just going to do what I do best and allow them to shine today. And because I know that my time will come or my opportunities will arise. So a little bit less about community, but I also do in my classes a sense of autonomy. And so it's, it's not necessarily about, it's not all about, okay, you be quiet and listen to what I have to say, but it's, I'm going to make you critically analyze why you're doing what you're doing. So you have a sense of, I can, ins I can put this into my own mind, in my own body, and then we are building teachers out of students. You can then get this critical analysis of the technique of our, our art form. And um, the students are able to take that and be like, all right, I'm ready for the field. I can, once I'm done, if I should choose to go the trait teaching route, I'm ready for it because I was taught to be ready for it. So the, like I said, there's a lot going on in my classes. And, um, and one sense is community. One sense is uh, uh, autonomous. And the other is building positive behaviors, positive practices in there. So if there's something that's going on, um, I'm trying to think of some, but like right off the spot, but if there's things that we can tackle in the industry, things that, that we want to put, make light, or not make light of, but shine light on it, like um, the psychological trauma that, that dancers go through uh, when they're in companies. Um, a really great account, if you guys have not followed them, is Dancers Anonymous. Um, tread lightly, <laughs> because it, it gets pretty heavy pretty fast. But it's a really good awakening, and it's a really good prompt for one to look at the industry and say, instead of being fearful of it, to say, okay, let's make a difference. Let's make the change then. Let's adapt this industry so that we can finally let it be what it's supposed to be, which is art and humanity, because art is for humanity. We're not supposed to we're not supposed to put ourselves under it so that we can lift art up. We are art. Like it is what we are. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. really good English, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but yeah, so my classes are they are they're really based on critical analysis, um, allowing the students to partake in the sense that they are participating with me as a teacher. Um, and it's it's worked so far. I mean, you, we don't have to we don't have to um, go at the expense of good technique or excellent technique. You can still be an excellent technician and do these things. Um, I have to say that that the traditional method of of fear based instruction it works, y'all. It does work. I'm not going to deny that. But what does it benefit? Who who does it benefit? Why do you use it? Like it doesn't, it doesn't benefit you as a human being. It's only going to oppress you. And so let's try to bring something so that you can be impressive, so that you can really shine through your, your artistry, through your technique. And we don't need to have fear-based instruction anymore. That's so outdated. And uh, research has proved that we don't need that at all. It's actually a more efficient way to do things now. Yeah, I have so many comments. Let me let's see if I can organize. <laughs> let me try to organize my thoughts a little bit. Um, you know, you as you were saying, you're you're teaching critical thinking or how to understand what's going on, asking questions. Um, I had two big thoughts that came. One is that when I'm teaching, I have cues and knowledge and correction that I'm using, and I really try to find different cues and to connect with the person that I'm working with, especially when I'm working privately. But to be honest, every single time that dancer can say, oh, 
it's kind of like when you're a starfish and you're floating in the water and then the current comes and they come up with a whole analogy. And I'm like, yeah, it's exactly like that. That is exactly what it's it. like. And you know why it's exactly like that? Because you just did what I asked and your body looks phenomenal. Like that yeah. is why that is correct. <laughs> like, and my analogy did not totally. work for you or my analogy kind of oh. worked, but they went with it. So it was creating a sense in their body. It was allowing them to, I mean, I, it's never seems this way, but to in, in that traditional ballet sense where we are quiet, we don't say anything, we don't ask questions, we don't cor- correct the teacher. I absolutely could see how no one would say to me, oh, I don't really connect with that you know, correction. What, is it really like this? Or is it like a starfish floating in the water? But having that connection where the student can say, ah, I feel it like this. It was eye-opening for me. They did exactly what I was asking for, even better. And I used that cue on someone else and it freaking worked, you know? So it's like that dialogue unlocks things so much faster and having the space to have an opinion in the studio completely changes things. Uh, You, as you were saying, we walk into the studio and we, you know, we command and we follow and I absolutely know what you're talking about. And there were a few, few years ago, I guess it was before COVID. um, I was taking class and I was realizing that even with this big shift I've made personally, being able to take class and I've really changed the way I think about my own body and my own class and blah, 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 blah. I still was going into the studio and it's like a wall was going up around me and I'm a very friendly person, but I also am a very focused person. Like I'm, I focus, Uh, but I felt inside of me, this familiar wall go up. That was like, I'm in ballet class. I can't talk to anyone. I need to focus (laughs) and I need to be ready to do my best. And yes, I still want all of those things, but also I'm here to build community. Also, I like, dancers. I want to have fun in class. And that means communicating with the other dancers and warming up well and smiling and enjoying it. Not this wall thing that is goes up inside of me. And sometimes very visibly, if I think about when I was a little bit younger, like it was like outside alley in class alley, completely different people. Yeah. And I don't want that. And I don't want, I want outside alley to be part of dancer alley and I want them to mesh. And I don't think that there's the space for that um, in my past and in a lot of studios or in a lot of teaching. Uh, so I love this idea of being able to create the space for that and encouraging that community that allows for all of you to be in the studio, not just dancer alley who has to show up a hundred percent every single time. Otherwise you're a terrible dancer person. I, I mean, honestly, I, it happens to me too. Um, unfortunately, because of my incredibly busy schedule, I forgot to mention that I'm also uh, pursuing a master's in education. <laughs> so casually I'm writing my thesis. Okay. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so I have not taken a class in a hot minute. Yeah. Um, but my body misses it. My brain misses it because there's nothing mm-hmm. like it, but I would feel the same way. I would walk in and it, the, for some reason that like past experiences that we have, it's just, it just comes into action. It's weird. It's like, I, I have nothing to like compare it to, but it's, um, it's like a default setting. Yeah. It's such a if you know, thing. you know. It's like when your computer resets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it is kind of weird. Um, but it's something that it, I think it's very much like a lot of the things that um, is really beautiful about our culture today is that we are recognizing these patterns that aren't working for us anymore. And we're breaking this systemic sort of cycle. Mm-hmm. And the hardest part about it is recognizing when it comes out when it's unrecognizable i've had to a really good teacher by the way will apologize to you it's it's nuts but a really good teacher will recognize they've made a a wrong they've done wrong and they will actually be uh sorrowful and because they've overstepped a boundary and i did it with um i'm teaching summer school right now in fact this tomorrow's my last day but um I did it with one of my classes, which is, it's not dance related, but it definitely comes into play. I've done it with many dance classes before, but I did something and I recognized, hmm, that probably would not be beneficial for the majority of the crowd here. And so therefore I've overstepped a boundary of some sort and I've affected them in some way. And guys, 
I don't know if you've ever like received an apology before, but it's such a good feeling. Like it's a really enjoyable, well, I wouldn't say enjoyable, but it's, it's redemption. Like it's this sense of, ah, oh, something was made right here. So yeah, it's, it's that, that feeling there. I don't know how I went on that, went onto that subject, but yeah, that's something that either, definitely but... needs to come into play. Yeah, it also builds trust. I mean, it builds trust between humans and it yeah. builds trust between the mentor and the mentee to be like, okay, they they have a sense of what, what I'm feeling, where I'm going, where I'm coming from. And the person that I look towards is not blind to that. And I, I think that mm-hmm. that happens a lot in the world where the person that we put up on a pedestal um, either sees themselves up there or is just unaware that, that they are on someone's pedestal. And so that there's not this communication and this exchange and this trust that's formed mutually. Uh, and when that is there, then there's, there is so much trust to be in the studio and be in such a vulnerable art and place and make mistakes and try new things and experiment and fail, you know, all those things that, yeah. that has to, that has to come with trust in the studio from to the teacher and then also to your peers as well to have that experience yeah. so what what in the dance world again i i know i could keep talking to you so i mean i have to keep it in the reins of an hour here but uh <laughs> in in the dance world here currently do you feel like the things you mentioned about you changing in in your class in your studio um is that what you wish for the whole dance world i mean is that what your vision of a healthy dance world looks like or are there other things bigger things smaller things that you see that you're aware of and are maybe actively working to change you know student by student or in bigger senses as well i think that i think that in the long run long term this is something i would love to see transform the classroom i would love to see that the classroom be beneficial to the students um Something, something is kind of give you a little background. Something that uh, probably a lot of people don't know about me is that I am also a biology teacher, and mm-hmm. so I teach the regular classroom in, in addition to the ballet classroom. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's interesting to see the history of education and how we've chance how we've changed and adapted based off of research, and then to look at. Um, the history of the ballet classroom, and then see how it's literally not changed since, I mean, God knows how long. I'm sure King Louis the Fourteenth was doing the same, <laughs> receiving the yes, same instruction seriously. as we were. But, I mean, it's uh, Jason Harrison with Present Tense Fitness was describing um, something. We went live back in, I believe we were doing, I think it was my Turnout Talk series. We were talking about it, and he was saying that uh, something about the fitness industry being 30 years behind, um, oh, now I'm forgetting it, but 30 years behind the scene, basically, the mm-hmm. dance fitness industry, that's what he said, being 30 years behind the scene. And it's entirely true. Like, we're, as dancers, we can be doing so much more if we were up to date with what uh, exercise science and fitness tells us. Um, and it's the same thing in the ballet classroom. Ballet education can be absolutely amazing. But it's just, I would say, even more than 30 years behind the scene. We can learn so much from what academic education tells us. And I know some of y'all are thinking, no, no, please, no. I've escaped there. I don't want to think about academic education. But students, you don't have to. That's what teachers are for. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's what we are here for. We can learn what research tells us. We can learn what modern uh, psychological educational research tells us. And... um, allow the the ballet classroom and the dance classrooms to transform. So to answer your question, yeah, I want to see this be across the board. I would love to see every single classroom be uplifting students and treating them as human beings first and dancers second. And because at that point, you're fulfilling the person that will then be able to fulfill the art form instead of treating the person as as an object or a subject um, to fulfill whatever art need that is there. Um, so it would be grand to see that, but as we know, uh, you, you don't get something overnight. You don't get a specific skill overnight. It takes time. And so 
some like very short term things that I would love to see is um, our teachers take in uh, a sense of this kind of metacognitive awareness of what is going on in their classroom. Because if they start doing that, instead of just saying, all right, guys, let's go into plies, okay, and then obviously we're going to go into tondus, they can really catch things early and say, hey, I've noticed that we are doing this. This is going to come out to play later because we are going to do this. So let's talk about it real quick and then not be afraid of taking that time. I think uh, uh, teachers can be really fearful of, well, we only have a certain allotment of time, but... If you think if you think about it, if you tackle that one thing, it's tackled. And then all you have to do is revisit it and make sure that the, the students um, are reminiscing as they move forward because that's how progress is made, right? History repeats itself unless we constantly evaluate what happens in, in time and we say, okay, let's not do that again. Let's try not to let that happen again. And if it does, we have grace and we have a sense of, okay, it happened. We make mistakes. Let's move on. But yeah, it's it's something I would love to see the inclusion of um, educational research and the inclusion of dance science research uh, into mm-hmm. the classroom. Do you have any quick uh, resources or tips or places that you have found information as a as a dance teacher? If someone's like, "Huh, this sounds interesting," where could someone s- like start their their search? Whether that be on Instagram or books or podcasts? Is there anything that springs to mind for you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a running list right here. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like pulling up my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys want to get started right now and you want to get information, you want to um, boost your your knowledge and gain the research immediately, start taking classes with NDEO. National Dance Education Organization. NDEO is an amazing resource for dance educators, dancers, professional dancers, um, because they are all about advancing dance education in the arts. Um, that's an amazing place. I'm a member with them. Um, they have amazing, uh, I forget exactly what it's called, I'm looking it up right now, but they have basically like courses that you can take throughout the year that help you to advance in your understanding of dance in general. Um, These courses are learn. You're making this so easy on me because normally I go searching for all these things. He's doing it for (laughs) me, this is lovely. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Such a great teacher making it easy to get this information. You're welcome, (laughs) y'all. Oh, there we are, online courses. I think it's DDEI upcoming courses let's see so they have some courses through please tell me what it is there's like an actual name that they have opdi i'll just have to send it to you because i'm not sure but it's really cool one of the new courses that they have that's starting july 27th um which oh excuse me starting august 1st which may or may not you know be be passed by the time this comes out is uh hip-hop history and heritage which is really Mm -hmm. cool um, there's ballet theory and composition, uh, integrating social emotional learning, abbreviated mm-hmm. as SEL, in dance curriculum. That's huge, by the way, in the education uh, field. Uh, dance stagecraft and production. We have creating an ethics and pedagogy of teaching without touching, which mm-hmm. is something I would love to take because y'all, it's it's time to stop doing that. <laughs> we can teach without touching. Sometimes, mm-hmm. yeah, we have kinesthetic learners, but um, that's a, a whole rabbit hole that we can talk about later. Um, they have a, an entire, what's it called, standards list that you can actually implement into your program that make it amazing. It's uh, one of the things I'm huge on is make sure you're setting learning goals. Um, and so they they have standards for dance that you can say, okay, they, they are below standard or they are standard or they are proficient above standard. And um, mm-hmm. so th- one of the classes is implementing the national core art standards, using dance pedagogic content knowledge to drive programmatic and self-growth. There's just so much you guys can do through NDEO. I'm a big fan. And once I stop becoming or being a master student, I will most likely start taking classes with NDEO. <laughs> oh, you're not going to add uh, more classes to it. your load? <laughs> you know, I, it's so tempting, but... No. So tempting, but no. 
<laughs> yeah. I am, no, burnout is a real thing, y'all. Do not overload your plate. I, I am the worst. It's funny because Anna Morgan, I'm sure you know Anna Morgan, right? Mm-hmm. Anna Morgan Dance. She put mm-hmm. out a reel and it was like talking about burnout. And I was like, this is not talking about me whatsoever <laughs> at all. This is not me. Yes. But yeah. Well, teachers, uh, gosh, I know for myself and I firmly believe this for any teacher, when things start getting boring or frustrating, it's time for me as the teacher to explore new education, new ways yeah. of teaching or learning or building my own knowledge base. And then it becomes interesting again. And yeah. uh, I mean, every time I get out of a, a course or a program and I get to come back with a new way to be approaching something, I'm the, I mean, the hours go fast. The kids are loving it. The students are getting new things. I'm learning new things. And then it, then everything is very interesting for another good chunk of time. And, but it takes effort on my part as a teacher to continue to search those things yeah. out. And I think it's really easy when we get caught up feeling overwhelmed, lots of things going on. I mean, you legit have a lot of learning going on, but we, I know I get all the other things going on and it's like, oh, I, I don't want to spend time doing that. Like I don't have time for that, but I'm always so grateful right. when I've taken the day or the weekend to do something different than what I'm doing every single day in my teaching. It's always worth it. So if you're that person right now that's feeling the burnout or bored with teaching or, you know, overwhelmed with the student load or whatever it is, I think one of the best things you could do for yourself is to go search out education that inspires you for whatever reason, mm-hmm. even if it doesn't have to do with dance, and then carry that into the next thing that you do. Yeah. And in addition to that, there's um, the cool thing about NDEO is that you can do it on your own time. It's all mm-hmm. online based, which may or may not be a, something for uh, uh, an incentive for people. But if you're a busy dance teacher who's teaching all hours in the evening, then this is something you can easily do in the mornings, you can do on the weekends. It's mm-hmm. something that you can professionally develop yourself as an educator, as a leader in the industry. And it's it's great. Um, in addition to that, by the way, um, pretty soon I'll actually be uh, launching some online courses that I'll be providing. And um, right. hopefully in the future, some of my, some of my friends will mm-hmm. be providing. So it's going to be... Uh, collegiate level, like university level uh, instruction. So like it's, you're basically going to college to get this type of education. And I want to provide that for you. And, you know, it's, but yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty darn excited about that. And I have a lot of plans for it. Um, so it's, it's all about re-educating the way you feel or the way you think about ballet. And uh, yeah, more on that later, but yeah. Uh- like it's like the best worst teaser why is it not out right now (laughs) that's gonna be amazing i know you're like because i'm doing everything else uh (laughs) it's gonna be amazing i'm really excited and we'll definitely be sharing that when you get that out um in that on that note for everyone if you have not checked out austin's instagram i highly recommend it every single post every single post i'm like huh you just made me totally reevaluate what I'm thinking about life in ballet right now. Ser- seriously. I Get love out. it. Seriously. I'm always like, oh, that is what I needed to hear. The good refreshers, reminders, new information. And you do it in such a fun way that makes me um, want to absorb it. It's not a lecture. It's like, you know, it's real style. It's real style, but it's such uh. good content. There is never, it's not fluff. And I'm, I'm okay with a little bit of fluff. I throw some fluff out there too, but I really appreciate that every single piece that you put out there is, I can tell there is thought, like, what am I trying to say? And how do I present Mm -hmm. this in a social media, you know, the era we're in, how do I present (laughs) this information? But on social media and guys, it's not easy. Like if you are not somebody who creates on social media, good for you is my opinion, but uh, really. It's hard. It is so hard so to take a, a like a stupid reel that's popular and then put it into something that means something in the world that you're in. It is challenging. And we see a lot of people not do it very well, but you do it very well every single time. So everyone needs to go check out your Instagram. Um, I will mm-hmm. tag everything below. Is there any other ways that people can get in contact with you, uh, reach out to you with questions? 
Uh, do you do privates? What, how, how can people work with oh, you? Yeah. Um, uh, as for me, um, you can absolutely DM me and I will get back to you. Like I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Um, and if I'm not, it usually means that I'm working on my master's thesis. I was going to say you're in master's <laughs> um, class. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my master's class. Um, but yeah, no, I'm pretty good at getting back to you at least 48 hours or at most at 48 hours because, mm -hmm. Um, I value, I value communicate communication and, and community. Um, and I value hearing from you guys. Um, so you can easily DM me and I will absolutely start a conversation with you. Don't let like, um, don't let it fool you. I'm not uh, a profile. I'm not just a, a I'm an actual human being and I, mm -hmm. I practice what I preach. Like I am a human first and then I'm a dance teacher second. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm an occupation second. So just just reach out. I'm happy to do so. And to answer your question, yeah, I do. Uh, I do one-on-one um, -on -one consultations. I'll, I do private tutoring. Even if you're a teacher and you want to to gain something from this experience, let's get our tights on. Let's get our shoes on. Let's go. Let's like let's have a little ballet class together and and talk about it. Okay, like you know, you're a student. I'm a student. You teach me. And like it's fun. I, I love doing that. Um, we can even chat. I have it on my, my profile. It's, it's pretty easy. You go to my web page that's uh, in the link in the bio, and um, you can just sign up with my calend Calendly. And um, I have two options right now. I'm a little, uh, in case you, you couldn't figure out, I'm, I'm, I'm a little busy, and so I only have one day <laughs> set up for that. Um, but I wanted to allot some time for y'all. So, mm -hmm. um, but, And if the times that I have there don't work for you, shoot me a message. I'll make it work. Okay, I'll make my schedule work for you. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, that's awesome. That's up. I mean, aside from that, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty reachable. Um, and that that new like online content stuff will be coming out. I really hope that I can get it out by August, uh, mm -hmm. mid August. That'll be very nice. <laughs> it's been a project, and I, I was hoping for July, and just didn't happen. So much. I I yeah, I'm the worst at like overloading my plate. So I feel you on that one. <laughs> I feel you on that one. And most likely this episode is going to be airing after that August date. So you guys should be checking to see if this is live. Uh, if you can find Austin's thing. And if not, Mark, if you put it in your little save file and you'll definitely be hearing from me on Instagram when Austin does put something out there. So we'll keep you all in contact that way as well. Well, thank you so much for spending time yeah. with me. This was so fun. I really could keep going. So we'll have to have you back and do Open another on. conversation because yeah. we'll just, we'll keep going. So we'll have you back for part two. And uh, thank you so much for coming on.